A large orchestrated drone attack across Russia from Ukraine sets oil refineries alight. 200 tons of food departed from Cyprus to Gaza as aid. Israeli strikes kill 67 people on the first day of Ramadan celebrations. Nine regions across Russia were hit by a large orchestrated drone attack by Ukraine. The attacks targeted several oil refineries which caught fire. Russian state medium Ria Novosti reported that Russian air defense systems reacted to 25 drones launched from Ukraine over several regions across Russia. The attacks caused damage to the refineries, with many forced to pause operation. Meanwhile, shelling in Kherson struck a home and a vehicle, killing one person. Multiple villages in Kherson have been hit by shelling over recent days. Russia otherwise moves to consolidate its victory over Avdivka, which fell to Russian forces in February after months of intense fighting. An aid shipment with around 200 tons of food set sail from Cyprus to Gaza on Tuesday. The shipment is a test for the opening of a sea corridor to supply aid to the territory. Charity World Food Kitchen announced the ship set sail on Tuesday. The United States has announced separately that it plans to construct a sea bridge near Gaza in order to deliver aid. Aid groups have warned that starvation is spreading across Gaza and in some areas it remains nearly impossible to deliver aid. Israeli airstrikes killed at least 67 people in Gaza on the first day of Ramadan, according to the Gazan Health Ministry. The strikes continue as hundreds of Palestinians begin celebrating Ramadan, a month normally associated with joy and celebration. UNRWA has called for a ceasefire during the month of Ramadan, citing widespread hunger and calling the situation in the north of Gaza tragic. It is estimated that around 80% of Gaza's population have been displaced since the start of the war, and supplies of food and water are scarce, with many families living off one meal a day. In response to the first day of Ramadan, Egypt has delivered aid via air into northern Gaza. Chaos in Germany as air travel and rail strikes ensue. Lufthansa expects around 600 flights to be cancelled in Frankfurt, Germany's largest airport, this Tuesday, with some 70,000 passengers affected. The strike, called by Flight Attendants Union, began at 4 a.m. and is scheduled to last until 11 p.m. local time. This airstrike coincides with a new train driver strike. The GDL Union called on drivers of Deutsche Bahn's passenger trains to walk out for 24 hours starting at 2 a.m. Meanwhile, drivers of freight trains have been striking from 6 p.m. on Monday. The GDL union is demanding working hours to be reduced from 38 to 35 hours per week without a pay cut. From the battlefield to the football pitch. For most of these amputee players who have joined Ukraine's first football club for veterans with amputations, the game has become their therapy. After suffering the worst injuries in the most ferocious frontline battles, today they have found a way to ease their pain, not just physical but also emotional. That's exactly what playing football has done to Valentin, as well as to other players. We met them during one of their two-hour-long training sessions. You could feel uh, some different uh, emotions, but for me I think that always football was kind of therapy. 
you know, when I could relax, when I could, uh, I don't know, uh, regenerate my mind and uh, I could just uh, forget about anything, just playing football, just concentrate on the thing which I, which I love. Even for the football coach, this experience is a first. He has never trained such a team before and he finds it an extremely fulfilling experience. То для мене звичайно, що краще ті, хто мають хлопці ампутації, тому що це корисніше для них, і це ти можеш ти можеш бути корисним крім фізично, а ще й психологічно для них. But it's not just for fun. They are determined to win. They had the chance to show their greed recently in their first championship in Poland. The peach offers them a second chance after such a significant loss. Tournaments, for example, at it was in Poland. Uh, for us, maybe it was kind of uh, also revenge to show that Ukrainian spirit is uh, unbreakable. And uh, I want uh, to show that uh, we're strong and we're proceeding to fight. The team hopes the sport will become even more popular in Ukraine and that more former soldiers will follow their example. George Orlandi for Euronews in Lviv. Ukraine. Moscow installed occupation authorities opened early voting in temporarily occupied territories of Ukraine for Russia's presidential elections on the 10th of March that will last until the 14th of March. Kremlin Newswire TASS reported on the 10th of March that early voting started in occupied Donetsk region but noted that early voting in the areas close to the front line has been going on since the 25th of february the ukrainian luhansk region military administration head artem lisohor stated that 2600 so-called luhansk people's republic election commission officials have been conducting door-to-door -door campaigning for the past 20 days according to the russian interior ministry there are about 2.8 million residents in the temporarily occupied territories of ukraine who are now russian passport holders russia makes access to services in these regions including social services and health care conditional on the receipt of russian passports those who refuse will become foreign citizens or stateless persons starting from the 1st of July 2024. There is a realistic possibility that individuals will be deported or face detention up to this date if they don't have Russian passports in what the UK Defence Ministry calls, quote, a relentless Russification policy. The Institute for the Study of War continues to assess that the Kremlin and Russia-installed occupation officials intend to falsify votes in support of Russian President Vladimir Putin and fabricate a large voter turnout in an attempt to legitimize Russia's occupation of Ukraine to the international community. Ukrainians woke up Monday to the news that the country had won its first Oscar. The documentary 20 Days in Mariupol, a harrowing first-person account of the early days of Russia's invasion in 2022, won the award for Best Documentary Feature on Sunday. Я сподіваюся, що ця премія надасть поштовх Конгресу нарешті ухвалити такі потрібні для України допомогу військову, щоб ми могли захищатися і відвоювати свою землю і своїх людей. In the meantime, drone attacks overnight damaged two multi-story buildings, a hotel and a municipal building in the eastern city of Kharkiv. No casualties were reported. Haiti's Prime Minister Ariel Henry has announced he will resign following weeks of international pressure. He made the announcement hours after officials from the Caribbean and the U.S. met to discuss a solution to Haiti's crisis. Your leadership today, but thank you for your leadership every day. Law and order in Haiti has collapsed in recent weeks. 
as gangs have attacked the main airport and burned down police stations. Henry is currently stranded in Puerto Rico after being prevented by armed gangs from returning home. Record temperatures have again caused problems for ski resorts this winter. In a ski Austrian resort, diggers are removing remaining snow from ski slopes to welcome summer sports enthusiasts. Unser Skibetrieb ist früher vorbei als erwartet. Deswegen sind schon unsere Trailbauteams auf den Pisten und schaufeln die Trails aus, dass wir mit Mountainbiken starten können. Eine der möglichen Lösungen ist Sommersport. Bei schlechter Schneelage benutzen bereits im März Mountainbiker die Pisten von St. Corona am Wechsel. Andere Aktivitäten sind Sommerrodeln oder Wandern. Mittlerweile generiert das kleine Skigebiet mehr Geld durch Sommer als Wintersport. The EU co-founded the Transstat project that connects nine resorts from Europe that are testing various forms of solutions to combat climate change. Wir hoffen, dass wir durch den Austausch mit den anderen Skigebieten Dinge lernen, die wir so noch nicht am Schirm haben. However, it is not just the lack of snow that is being analyzed. Rising property prices due to tourists buying vacation homes is also an issue. In two years' time, Transstat will publish a guideline for livable and climate-ready winter sports destinations. Johannes Pleschberger, Euronews.